Here's an example of Japanese wooden furniture assembled with perfect precision. But its most remarkable feature is not visible. These pieces are made solely with wooden joinery. Not a single nail is used. Traditional Japanese joinery techniques known as sashimono have been passed down for centuries. They show off the pattern in the wood grain to best effect. Seventy percent of Japan's land is forested. The Japanese have learned how to bring out the very best of this abundantly available natural material. Sashimono furniture is more than just beautiful. It also incorporates ingenious and practical features. And new life can be breathed into old pieces so that they can continue to serve in contemporary homes. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we look at sashimono woodwork, which embodies the essence of Japanese aesthetics and traditional craftsmanship. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakat. Our theme for today is sashimono, which is a term that I suspect probably means very little to most people. Quite honestly, it didn't mean anything to me either until very recently. But I discovered that what it refers to is traditional Japanese joinery and the furniture and objects that are made using it. And I'm on my way to visit a shop that specializes in those very articles here in the old part of town in Asakusa. Well, this is the place. And you can see it's full of furniture. Some little low tables here. And you've got things like these little mini chest of drawers. These are very nice. This one's made for CDs, it says. And a chest like this. These things are beautiful, aren't they? Look at the smoothness of that work there. They're, literally, there's not one nail used in making this, putting it together. It's, it's almost unbelievable. And then this thing on top. In the old days, these things were used for storing medicines. You can put just about anything in it, though, really. That's beautiful. Whoa. <laughs> it's fun. Don't come out. Stay there. Let's find out how this is done. Tokyo is home to a joinery tradition dating back centuries. Woodworkers here used to make furniture and household goods that were loved by samurai and merchants in the shogun's capital, Edo. Toshio Toda has been a craftsman in the Edo joinery tradition for 40 years. He treasures an heirloom that was passed down to him by his teacher. A set of models of the joints used in woodworking. There are around 30 different basic types of joint. Each is intended to join wood pieces in specific shapes and orientations. All the joints consist of projecting tenons and matching recessed mortises. Here are two pieces of wood joined at a right angle. Tenons play a vital part in this joint. When wood is joined by this method, the tenons are not visible from the outside. The interior surfaces of the boards are carved out to create recessed mortises, alternating with projecting tenons. The tenons are carved into a trapezoidal shape that broadens slightly toward the tip, and the mortises are carved to a precisely matching shape. The facing surfaces of the boards are cut to an angle of exactly 45 degrees using a special plane. The two boards are fitted together. The tenons and mortises interlock perfectly. The boards are very securely connected. Once the boards are joined, the mortises and tenons are concealed they cannot be seen from the outside. Not only that, the wood grain of the vertical and horizontal boards is aligned across the joint to preserve and even enhance the beauty of the wood.
Here is a more complex technique used to join three pieces of wood together. First, two of the wood pieces are joined. One is carved with a tenon, the other with a mortise, and they're joined at a right angle. Now an additional mortise is carved into the assembled joint. If you disassemble it, you can see that a new mortise is just one millimeter from the edge of the first tenon. Yoshio Inoue, the maker of the display shelf, learned the joiner's craft from his father. Slender columns improve the appearance of the objects on display. He can make them appear slender by rounding the corners. It's an optical illusion. The column, after it's been beveled, looks more elegant. There's no comparing them. Yet, in fact, this piece is the same thickness as the other at its thickest point. You can see that the column on the left really does appear more slender. And it's not just the columns. The topmost shelf also employs a sophisticated visual illusion. You can slip a postcard under the center part of the shelf, just one. But now, flip the shelf over, and it won't slide in under the middle. Inoue delicately shaves the underside of the top shelf, giving it an almost imperceptible curve. Doing this actually makes the shelf appear straighter. It's another optical illusion. Beveled columns that look slimmer. A top shelf with a subtle difference in thickness. Exceptional techniques are used for every part, both visible and invisible. This is the hallmark of Sashimono woodwork. I'm now in the neighbourhood of Negishi, which is also in the old part of town, not far from Asakusa, and it's an area where in the past a lot of sashimono craftsmen used to live. I'm going to be visiting the workshop of Mr. Toshio Toda, who's the man you've just seen in the video, and this is it here. You can kind of tell from the wood outside, can't you? Konnichiwa. Just look at all the wood stacked here, on this side, all in here, and all around here, too. just look at all this stuff. Amazing. I know that your work is incredibly intricate and there are some special tools you use to do it. I was wondering if you could show some of them to us today. Hi. Yeah. These are particularly special to us sashimono craftsmen, the baby planes. Wow! 
these all different. Something like this one and this one. There are more than 130 in all. <laughs> Once a big plane like this becomes unusable, you cut it up and make these. You round off the edge like this. And then this plane right here is for a finer shaving. Like this. That one is for when you want to create a curved groove like this. Oh, wow. Amazing. See, like this. Ah. It sounds like a lot of... It must be a lot of fun, actually, working with it with this. Yeah, to make something out of a piece of wood. I've enjoyed it since I was a kid, so, yeah, it is fun. OK, let's move on now and take a look at the most common kind of furniture made with sashimono, and that's the chest of drawers. Todaiji Temple in Nara Prefecture. The Great Buddha Hall here is one of the largest wooden structures in the world. Tordaiji's buildings were all constructed using interlocking wooden timbers. It's thought that these construction techniques came to Japan from the Asian continent along with Buddhism itself. Such techniques were applied to making furniture and household goods. At Shaw Soin, a storehouse of ancient treasures, you can see one of the earliest examples of the use of wooden joinery. This box is believed to have been used to hold sacred offerings. Around 500 years ago, techniques for milling thin boards using a special saw became more advanced, allowing more complex wooden objects to be made. With the growth of Japan's economy during samurai times, many types of wooden furniture became popular. This is a step chest of drawers. It was invented to make efficient use of the space beneath stairs. The unique shape is used to fit in drawers of various sizes. Here's a compact chest used by merchants. It even contains a built-in abacus for counting money. In centuries past, typical dwellings were made of wood and used a lot of paper. As a result, fires spread rapidly. The city suffered countless devastating conflagrations. To protect valuables on those occasions, wheeled cabinets were constructed. The wheels made them easy to trundle to safety in the event of a fire. Japanese chests of drawers also went to sea. Ocean transport was an important means of distributing goods in those days. Ships serving ports around Japan enjoyed a bustling trade. These nautical chests of drawers were used aboard ship. Each one is compact to suit cramped quarters and sturdy enough to withstand rough seas. This cabinet has an ingenious anti-theft feature. The drawer in the middle looks ordinary. But it actually slides to the side to reveal another drawer inside. Open this door and behind it is a Paulonia box. Remove the front panel of the drawer and another Paulonia box is revealed. The front panel of that box then slides away to reveal yet another box. It takes nine steps to reach the innermost compartment.
some of the doors have locks as well. Altogether, it's a pretty effective way to protect the owner's most precious documents or other possessions. During samurai times, the merchant class became affluent enough to buy fancy clothes, and as a result needed chests to store them in. And these were made in many parts of Japan. This style of furniture originates from the city of Sendai in Miyagi Prefecture. The extensive use of metal fittings echoes the design of Japanese nautical chests. Another characteristic of this type of chest of drawers is the use of multiple layers of lacquer on the front. After the lacquer dries, it's polished with a whetstone. After many coats, the chest acquires a translucent amber hue with a mirror-like sheen. From tiny boxes to opulent chests of drawers, beautifully finished sashimono furniture served as a symbol of a prosperous life. I'm in Shinkiba, a part of Tokyo where you can find top-grade lumber from all over Japan. In fact, the name of Shinkiba itself actually means new wood place. These logs that you see here in the olden days would have been floated down the river. These days they're brought by truck inland, but they're kept here in the water because it's an ideal environment for preserving the wood. They've got an absolutely unbelievable variety of different kinds of wood here. I'm going to take a look at some of them. Can you explain, please, some of the different kinds of wood you have here? This is Japanese horse chestnut. The pale color of the wood exudes a natural warmth, so it's a popular material for dining tables and things like that. This is the rare naturally blackened wood of the species called date plum, and every piece is different, like some crack more easily than others. If it looks like it might crack, then keep it in a cold place or lay it down flat or whatever. You have to take good care of it for five years to turn it into good lumber. We've been talking about the grain in the wood, nature's own design work, if you like, and each one, of course, unique. Next, we're going to take a look at how Japanese woodworkers take advantage of that grain. 70% of Japan's land is covered in forest. For thousands of years, the people of Japan have felled trees and made use of the timber. Japanese joinery work makes use of various woods, including Zelkova, Hinoki Cypress, and Paulonia. Paulonia is relatively fast-growing, lightweight, and easy to work. It readily absorbs moisture, so it's often used for clothes chests and boxes that are used to store precious items. Mulberry trees growing in the mountains are a source of wood that is very hard thanks to its dense grain, making it suitable for intricate work. Let's meet a master craftsman in Kyoto who does traditional joinery using mulberry wood. His name is Koshun Kawamoto. For nearly 30 years, he has mainly made items used for the tea ceremony. What matters most to Kawamoto is the pattern shown by the wood grain. To highlight the wood grain, he paints lime onto a mulberry board and lets it dry. When he wipes it off and polishes the board, a distinctive effect is achieved. This is what we call a mulberry color. The pattern in the wood grain stands out better against this than the original yellow. 
This is an item called a tobacco tray used in the tea ceremony. The beautiful natural pattern in the wood grain has been enhanced and this is something the guests will enjoy looking at. Two hundred kilometers south of Tokyo is Mikura, an island known for its sheer cliffs. This is the source of mulberry wood that is said to have the most beautiful wood grain patterns of all. Mulberry from Mikura grows hard. Only specimens that can endure stormy ocean gales survive and the grain pattern is a record of each tree's tenacity. And how does one enhance the pattern of the wood grain? This is where skill comes into play. First, the surface is planed. Then the wood is carefully rubbed with the leaf of a muku tree, a kind of elm. Because the leaf is slightly abrasive, it acts like sandpaper on the surface of the mulberry. And this is the result. A deep and dazzling amber gleam emerges. Here is a superb table made of premium Japanese mulberry. The undulating pattern in the wood grain formed over many decades causes light and dark to shift like a flickering flame. It all depends on how the light hits it. From the maker of the piece to its owner, traditional Japanese joinery shares the gift of wood's inherent appeal in the best possible way. In addition to felling wild timber and putting it to use, in Japan there's also much active planting of trees for future forestry. And one of the species that's most cultivated in this way is Paulonia. This is a piece of Paulonia here, not that I would have recognized it in this state if I hadn't been told, but it's a particularly light wood, both in color and in weight. Uh, Paulonia is much prized for its use in chest of drawers and boxes intended for storing precious items. Next, we're going to take a look at the history and significance of chests made of Paulonia. Kamo City in Niigata Prefecture. Surrounded by forested mountains, it has long enjoyed a prosperous... It represents her best wishes for her happiness. If a Paulonia chest is well taken care of, it can stay in use for 100 years. Takashi Kuwabara represents the third generation in his family to have made and restored chests of drawers. No nails are used in making a traditional Paulonia chest of drawers. So once the hardware fittings have been removed, the entire piece can simply be planed to get rid of the discoloured surface and make the wood look as pale and good as new. I'd like to keep looking after Paulonia as a treasure of Kamo City. I want to keep it in use, if I can. In addition to repairs, Kuwabara also remodels chests of drawers. Here is a Paulonia chest that has served a family for three generations. Unfortunately, it's too badly damaged to restore. 
So Kuwabara refashions the wood recovered from it to transform it into a sideboard. Because no nails are used in traditional Japanese joinery, the wood remains largely intact and can be reused again and again. In this part of Japan there's a custom that when a daughter is born, a Paulonia tree is planted and the wood from that tree is used to make her bridal chest of drawers. But because cheap imported Paulonia has become popular and widespread, few people observe the custom nowadays. Since 1996, Kuwabara has been leading an effort to plant Paulonia seedlings in the area. So far, 100 trees have been planted. Trees are part of life in Japan, and the Japanese make effective use of them. And evidently, Paulonia chests of drawers are objects of special significance in this country. OK, well, it's about time to wrap up now. Uh, occasionally on this programme, you'll see me sitting like this on my knees. And quite honestly, it's torture. But today, I have a secret weapon. And this is it. And this, too, is sashimono. First of all, slide this little piece out. Then you slide that out, slide that out. This piece tucks away in here. Then. That slides in there. That slides in there. Look at that. Compact like that. You could take it anywhere with you and never, ever have to suffer again. I'll see you again next time. Next time on Begin Japanology, plastic food samples. We'll look at the craftsmanship of a unique 100-year-old tradition that captures the essential appeal of any dish.